Welcome to Darnley Cyber Cafe, your podcast for cybersecurity, IT, technology, and business news. Now, introducing your host, Darnley Gresson Jr. Hello, everyone, and thank you for listening to this latest podcast of Darnley Cyber Cafe. Happy New Year. For those who are ringing in the new year, I have best wishes and prosperity for you towards this new year of 2022. In this episode, I'll be talking about downsizing your digital weight for 2022. Now, the title is a tongue-in-cheek because a lot of people have these things called New Year's resolutions where they would try to probably lose weight. That's one of the biggest search uh, things for uh, the New Year is, is how to lose weight. So I want to do something a little bit different, not talking about weight on your body, but your weight in the digital world. Now, as we move into a new year, um, you need to understand that our digital footprint, so to speak, is increasing the more that we are online. There are a lot more things that we do on the computer, on our mobile devices that we think go away. But as I always say, it's stored in digital ink. Everything we do, say, post, send, it's recorded and archived in every way, shape, or form. So if this doesn't bother you, if this doesn't concern you at the least, then what can I say? It's maybe this podcast is not for you. But the most important thing is to understand this one simple fact. You will never get a clean slate, but you can downsize your digital weight. So what I mean by that is the fact that you will not, even with all my recommendations in this podcast, you will not get a clean slate. The only people who get a clean slate are newborns that are born today. And that's unfortunately up to the parents to decide if they should or should not. So actually, you know what? That that gave me a great idea (laughs) as I'm recording this. For those who have newborn children, and before I get into this podcast, for the people who want to downsize their own weight, Keep this in mind. When you're posting videos, photos, information about your new son or daughter on the internet, keep these things in mind and project how far in the future, 5, 10, 15 years from now, from all this data you are releasing about your child on the internet. It's a good idea as a responsible parent in the digital age to be very conscientious of what data and what information that you are posting online for your child. So into this we go. Your your data is used against you um, to buy stuff and buy more stuff and to obviously change your opinion on a subject matter or a political standpoint. This is a very important thing to talk about because we always, always do stuff online now. It's hard to say that you're never, ever going to be how, you're never going to have an online presence. You're going to, if you like it or not. We have moved from that sort of archaic landscape 20, 30 years ago when we barely used uh, any technology. Now technology is in our lives every single day. So it is It is very, it's very difficult. Let me make this clear. It's very difficult, but not impossible task to take these following steps along with practicing good online habits and you need to take it step by step. So these steps I'm going to give you, it's extensive. So if you have time, this podcast may be a little bit longer, but I'm going to lay out um, certain steps or certain things to look out for um, to decrease your digital footprint or ways that you can eliminate the, the amount of digital fat that you have online. So number one, opting out from data brokers. Now, some of you may or may not understand that data brokers are everywhere. And this is not, let me make this clear, this is not just Facebook and Google. They are private companies out there all over the world that are data brokers. And they buy this data from, let's say, Amazon, Facebook, or Google. But we all know Google, Amazon, and Facebook have massive digital data. 
And again, like I said earlier, depending on when you were born and whatever the case, these giants have your data of your life, such as likes, dislikes, health information, social connections, etc., etc. Uh, the countless data brokers exist that collect these large quantities of data and sell it on the regular. So, so the companies um, would build either their own proprietary search tools that would collect your name, address, date of birth, social number, uh, buying habits, and where you went to school, and some of your likes or dislikes. Now, you may ask, well, who are these companies? Some of these companies are as follows, uh, Axiocom, Equifax, and yes, Equifax, uh, Expedion, Oracle, um, Epilon. The, the, there's a process to actually opt out, uh, but this isn't always straightforward. Uh, people who live in the Europe or uh, California uh, have a bit of advantage. So even the UK, by the way. So Europe's GDPR laws and California's Consumer Privacy Act you can actually send requests to get your data deleted. So what does that mean for the rest of the world? Well, it's it's a there's it's a bit difficult uh, and not impossible, but very difficult um, where you may have to send email to these organizations. And I'll list them in the podcast description as well for those who are interested of finding these particular companies. But essentially, when you are emailing these companies and organizations, you have to make that request. Now, it's up to the company to decide whether or not they are going to really delete that data or not, especially if you don't follow under um, GDPR laws or the consumer, California's Consumer Privacy Act. This is why there's a big push all over the world to have a source like GDPR. And I also forgot to mention, too, um, for any of my Canadian listeners, too, that um, the uh, Office of the Privacy Commissioner is working at ways now for this to help Canadians also request to get their data released. It hasn't been developed yet at this time of recording, but it will happen very soon. And I'm hoping at least before the end of this year. Now, another thing is um, to get your Google search results updated. There are some limited steps to take to ensure what is displayed and what is up to date. Google will update its search results for pages that no longer exist or are significantly different than the previous uh, indicated version. So what that means is sometimes you will create something like a website or have information online, and Google has a good job of indexing the, the world, the World Wide Web, and changing and updating that information. And sometimes there's some out-to-date information that are out there, and you have to put that request through to get that, that data changed. So Google will consider these requests to remove either harmful content non-consensual, explicit images, fake pornography, financial, medical, or um, natural ID data or images of children, you will be, you will be uh, advised to provide evidence to remove this content. So they won't just go and delete everything and anything. They will have to, you'll have to provide some evidence and context as to why you want this information deleted. So again, like I said, it makes it a bit difficult, but not impossible to release or to delete, sorry, certain information from the online accounts. Now for um, speaking about online accounts, deleting old online accounts, um, plainly put, delete any or all email accounts or other accounts that you don't use anymore, plain and simple. And we all know we have one to 12 different um, accounts that we no longer use or log into anymore that sit there and collecting dust. Uh, you mean you mean you may need to track down, um, let's say for example, MySpace or Tumblr accounts, and make a list of all the accounts you remember that you used a email address or a username. Then work through it. Try to sign in and recover the account, and start the deletion process. There is a website called Just Delete. Dot me. So it's J U S T D E L E T E dot M E, just delete dot me, which will help you through those processes. So if you want to delete your MySpace account, for example, just delete me will give you the steps and show you the, the levels of difficulty that it will ensue in order for you to delete that account. And there's, there's a myriad of different options out there 
uh, different websites out there that you can use to delete your site. So creating a list and working through it, first of all, remembering your email address or remembering your usernames that you use, then you can work down that list. You can all, another idea is to search your inbox for old subscriptions or, or password managers also may contain certain old passwords in, as well in there for you too, or um, entering your email and phone number in a website called Have I Been Pwned? And that's spelled have, H-A-V-E, I, I, B-E-E-N, and pwned is spelled the P, P-W-N-E-D. This website, you can enter your email address and or your phone number, and then it will probably remind you of some old accounts that may come up through the search as well. There is uh, hard work ahead here. Let me make that very clear. There's a lot of hard work ahead to shut down these accounts. This is not an easy this is not an easy process. It's not a one, two, three, four step process. These websites, justdelete.me and Have I Been Pwned are good resources, um, sort of from a top level, for you to start the deletion process. And you have to be committed. So I'd say, at least if you're very committed in doing this, setting aside 15 minutes to 45 minutes a day, just every single day, just set that time aside to either do your planning or research in the accounts that may still be active out there in the digital world and just write it down. And over time, every time you do these 15, 45 minute sessions, go through these websites, delete it, visit justdelete.me or access Have I Been Pwned and see if you can find those relevant accounts for you to shut down. Um, You can also clean up your digital history. Um, You can start to clean the accounts you currently have and you you store online. Your Facebook or Twitter account may have posts that you want removed. And I don't mean like you know, offensive posts, stuff like that. That's not what I'm trying to illustrate at. But certain posts talking about uh, maybe, you know, 10 years ago about this wild party you went to and maybe associated pictures and stuff like that. You can delete it. You can hide it. You can create a different privacy settings in Facebook to, to change that. And I'll get into that in a minute. But there are ways for you to withdraw or hide or eliminate your presence on these applications. A bulk deleting old emails, for another example, is another great way to minimize your digital footprint. So let's say you have, for example, a old Hotmail account or Gmail account, and you want to delete some old emails from 12 years ago. Going back in time in those days and just highlighting them all and just deleting them away if you no longer need them for any purposes for other than nostalgic purposes or tax purposes, whatever the case may be, just delete them so they're not sitting there being indexed by Google, for example, or Microsoft, for example. But if you want to have a if you want to have a backup, uh, make sure you back up your email or social media accounts if you still want to access that data locally. So you're saying, well, I have all this these pictures these memories that I do want to keep, it's fair. So there are ways in different social media applications as well as your um, your email accounts where you can archive. So you can pull that information down to a local resource, so to an external hard drive or your computer, and you can save that information if you want to review it at a later date. At least it's not online anymore and you just pull it off. So Google does, so, so Google does not index your individual Facebook posts. But like I said, you should try to delete your old posts or at least stop people from viewing them. In Facebook, you can head to settings and privacy and look at your activity law log and select what you want to delete or you can delete your entire Facebook account too. That's the next best step <laughs> is just deleting the account altogether. Um, I understand the benefits and beauty of social media. You can, you can work, it can work against you as well as can work for you. So you need to take the reins in control of your Facebook profile, for example, Uh, perhaps not throwing everything on Instagram or Facebook about your life, not making constant updates, not putting a bunch of pictures of your kids on social media that it's wide open to the world, or you're sharing to everyone that you're not even friends with. Just be conscientious in some ways before you start putting this data online. I like to say, I don't want to say, you know, Facebook is evil and stuff like that. You know, whatever your opinion is in the big social media companies, 
is irrelevant, but you are in the ultimate control because you are in essence giving these companies your life story. You're giving them your private moments, your pictures, and you're handing it to them for free. And they're using that information that you're giving them for free and turning it into a profit. They're all, they all need to make money somehow. And if you don't pay for it, then you are the product. You're the reason why they are in business. So if you don't want that, you can A, pull the account altogether, or B, dump the data off their website and keep it archived in your computer or backup drive and continue using it conscientiously and not put so much content online. You can wipe that through and go on from there. And last but not least, using third-party removal tools or suites. Now, if you want to make your life easier, uh, you may you may have to look at third-party removal services because everything I mentioned earlier is an intricate, complex, and multifaceted approach to remove your data. Uh, but I like to err in the side of caution here, and this is what concerns me. Like there, there is a benefit to this, but on um, privacy security side, this also concerns me as well. So just keep this in mind while I say this. Some are paid services. However, these platforms will gain access to your account and will be able to see everything on your account. Use at your discretion. Let me make that clear. Use at your own discretion. This means you're giving your account information to this company. Yes, you're paying for it. Fair enough. And you can look at all the privacy the privacy um, documents, whatever you like in that particular third-party company, if you're if you're that not invested to actually do the work to remove your data, you need to understand you are giving up your entire account information and all the contents inside to your or to this third-party company. So it's another private company that you're paying money to to go in your account saying, hey, purge this and purge that. So if you're comfortable with that, Fair enough, go crazy, but just earn the set of caution if you are concerned about your privacy and the reason you are listening to this particular podcast is because you want to decrease your digital footprint. Just keep in mind, once these companies have your data, you don't know what's going to happen to it afterwards. You have no idea. So it's a great idea not to uh, use these things. In my honest opinion, is not to use these companies, but um, I, I wouldn't suggest it. And, and I haven't made recommendations because I don't want to steer in the wrong direction. I want you to know that there is an option available, but it's not something that you should be doing necessarily if you need to take the time to remove the data yourself. So again, it's impossible to keep your all your data off the internet entirely, but these are some steps to take moving forward. Being data conscious will help maintain the data you give online and protect you from evolving threats in the unknown data future. Remember, the data you post online today, the data you post 10 years ago, you have no idea how that data is going to be used against you in the future. There are companies of all shapes and sizes, not the big bad social media giants, but there are smaller companies and organizations that will grab that information and use it against you, use it for you to buy more stuff, to use it to um, pin you down in certain recommendations or um, hammer you down a certain political affiliation or whatever, all this data can and will be used against you at some point in time. may not be tomorrow, may not be next year, may not be in five years, but at some point in time, if you're not managing your data properly, it will then eventually go into the wrong hands. Thank you for stopping by Darnley Cyber Cafe with your host, Darnley Gresson Jr. We hope you enjoyed your stay. Next time you swing by the cafe, bring a friend and share the show with them. That's all for this episode, folks. We will see you next time.